what the Bible says, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all the Israelites accepted the good news, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. And the message is heard through the word about Christ. There is right there uh, a scripture that talks about the world needs the church. The world needs the children of God. The world needs the salt and the salt of the earth and the light of the world. So the message of Christ gets to those in need, to those that don't know God and that they can come to a new life, to a new experience. And see, the key here, and that's why I uh, subtitle the, the message of uh, this stage of evangelism, the message. And these scriptures, the word message is repeated again and again, even though it's said also in many other ways there. Um, it talks about who has believed our message. Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. The message. That's the, that's the key. And that's the situation when we talked about we love our neighbors in a sincere way. And that doesn't imply that we're going to necessarily push them to come to our church. Uh, we love them and we expose them uh, to the grace of God, to the, to the touch of of God in my life and, and, and to uh, the miracles that God had done and, and to whatever aspects of the kingdom of God, his children, the church, etc., we can expose them. It has to come the moment that we say to them the message. Because the message, the message is the one that says on verse 17, it is the one who brings Faith, that ob uproot faith out of a person, that that person can experience real faith for salvation. And, and there then comes another discussion, and is the fact that salvation is a matter of faith. Salvation is, can you repeat that with me? Salvation is a matter of faith. <clears throat> Romans chapter uh, 10 verse 17 says that consequently faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word of Christ. There is this emphasis in the message uh, here in this scripture. And uh, you might ask, so okay, uh, can I just, just have this feeling of, of this tender feeling, this loving feeling, and, and say, oh God, I love you? Um, well, no, it's not as simple as that. Because without faith, it's impossible to have a fellowship with God. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, Hebrews chapter 11, says that without faith it's impossible to please God. Can you say without faith is impossible? 
Without faith it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. You see, <clears throat> this... Um, this thing of being open-minded <clears throat> sounds good, but I don't think it's a scriptural. I think that the statements about the kingdom of God are pretty much um, fixed and rigid. The expression, I am the way, the life, and the truth, no one comes through the Father but through me, that is not an open-minded statement, is it? You correct me if I'm wrong. Is that an open-minded statement? No one comes to the Father but through me. Guys, you have, you have the, the PowerPoint there. You can put it from your computer. You guys have it, so... Go there. So that statement, no one goes through the Father but through me, is not open minded. And, and here, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Is it open minded? I see rigidity there. If there is no faith, there's no deal with God. And I'm not saying this. Because this is the, the, what uh, my denomination says. No, uh, we are saying this because this is the word of the Lord. It's not a matter of an organization. It's a matter of God's revelation. And for that reason, it, this is a strong thing. So the open-minded business, we need to help people figure out not always take to wrong, like they say. No. I mean, you may go to Rome, but not to God. There's only one way to the Father. And even though I know and I understand that better than open-minded, the kingdom of God's message is open-hearted, because the heart of God is there for the world. For God so loved the world. Because he, he doesn't want the death of the one who dies. Because he's not late in his return, as people think. But he is patient, giving us opportunity for salvation, says the scripture. So, yes, the kingdom of God is loving. The kingdom of God has a Christ that died with open arms for love to the world. But it's not an open-minded thing. It's not another game of our society with terms and, and accommodation of myself to, to keep being who I want, who I want, uh, who I am, in spite of what God wants to do with me. Amen. Okay, two or three. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. If you go to Hebrews chapter four, it says, "For we also have had the good news proclaimed to us." Just as they did, and it's talking about the, 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 the Jewish people and the Gentiles, but the message they heard was of no value to them because they did not share the faith of those who obeyed. There is here a problem. Can you move to the next? Uh, there is here a problem on people that even got the message, but they did not share the faith. Uh, the, the New King James Version says, not being mixed with faith. The message they, they heard, they didn't receive it in a 
pot of faith. It didn't land on a mattress of faith. And because there was no faith, even the word was lost. So, without faith, it's impossible. And you find Jesus even complaining in the next uh, slide to the disciples. Uh, he rebuked them for their lack of faith. When he appeared to the eleven and they, they didn't want to believe the, the women and the others that, that went before them to the tomb. And they said, he's risen, he's risen. And the, the women would say, the angels said that he is risen. And they say, mm -hmm, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. When Jesus appeared to them, he said, come on guys. I had another expectancy with you guys. Where is your faith? How many times did I tell you people of, uh, uh, of a little faith? So faith, it's uh, a necessary in the mix. It's like the plasma of the blood uh, that carries what the body needs to survive. So Jesus says we need faith. We need faith. Uh, on Mark chapter 16, uh, after Jesus had done many miracles among them, uh, including uh, the, the, um, the resurrection of Lazarus, the Bible, if you read that chapter, you're going to see that these people came and they, one of the themes and one of the, 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 the uh, conversations of the moment was that Lazarus was resurrected, but they took the, they, they took, uh, the conversation took a turn to, uh, oh, well, uh, we need to do something about this Lazarus, maybe kill him because, uh, you know, for that reason, uh, many people are following Jesus. I mean, they didn't decide, wow, he rose him from the dead. Goodness, that should mean something to me. No, 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 no. They said, let's kill it now. So that doesn't uh, continue to impact the life of people. He was amazed, this is the Bible says, at their lack of faith. I mean, Jesus was saying, these are really, really bad, bad people. He was amazed. Uh, on John chapter 12, in the next, uh, John chapter 12, you find uh, Jesus, and it's, it says that even after he had performed so many signs in their presence, they still would not believe in him. No matter, sometimes people are thinking, if God would do a miracle, eh, a miracle won't make it necessarily, it won't according to the scriptures. And, and in the same chapter, look, there is more complication to the issue. Yet at the same time, many even among the leaders believed in him. But because of the Pharisees, they would not openly acknowledge their faith for fear. They would be put out of the synagogue for they loved human Praise more than praise from God. Look, even faith, we can have problems with faith. Um, even when people say, oh, cool, that, that is true, that is true. Yes, that is true. But faith needs to go beyond confessing. Faith has to go beyond just affirming, yes, Jesus is the Lord, yes. Uh, uh, I don't remember who was the one who said, uh, yes, the, the demons also believe and tremble, but they don't obey the Lord. Faith has to drive my actions. And um, in, in, in a Spanish version, use the words preference. They prefer uh, to do this because they were afraid. And it's true. If we're living to please 
those around us. I mean, that, that was not such a bad idea because loving one another is a, an idea in, 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 the head, in the heart of God, but never another cre creature, creature uh, or another cre part of the creation is going to be more than the creator himself. So, even fear, uh, uh, the peer pressure is a terrible thing for a person to uh, even see in the grace of God, not following him. Uh, another thing that we know that Jesus spoke a lot against and, and spoke seriously was about money. Money was another grand, great in, in, uh, great obstacle for people to make a decision even when they got the conviction of following Jesus. So, ultimately, ultimately, we are talking about that the, important of the, the importance of the message uh, with the scriptures of Romans chapter 10, but ultimately, that message needs to be mixed with faith. It needs to be received in a heart of faith. Jesus will speak to people and they won't even listen. You remember Matthew chapter 13 when he spoke about the, uh, the, the, the parable of the sword and he explained it to the disciples and things. And uh, he said their heart has grown in their chest. Their pride is not allowing them to listen to my voice. It's not allowing them to see with their eyes. So ultimately, yes, the message is the key. We need to communicate the message because how will they believe if they don't hear the message? What will they believe if we don't tell them the word of Christ? What was the main uh, issue on Jesus' command that we go and make disciples? He said, teaching them to obey what I taught you. We need the word of Christ. They need the word of Christ. But the word of Christ needs to find a heart of faith. Faith in God, because without faith is impossible. So ultimately, that is the next, the next, yeah. We need to realize the message is important. We need to take the people to the point of the message, but they need to uh, bring out faith on that message. The next <clears throat> that I want to tell you that the, is the best way for getting faith. You know that Jesus sometimes found people who said, help, help my unbelief. You remember that? Somebody that came to Jesus and held me. I am such a skeptic. Help me to believe because I see with my eyes that you are tremendous, but I, I don't fall to your feet and worship. Something is limiting limiting me to worship you and he uh, asked Jesus to help him to believe but the way the best way for somebody to believe the best way of developing faith is with the word of god is with the word of god the scriptures are the key and that's the last point that i'm going to discuss today the scriptures you remember what paul said to timothy how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures where which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in christ jesus the scriptures are able and, and, and you see, the, 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 problem, the, the problem of not mixing the revelation with faith is, is everywhere. Because he's saying that the scriptures are able 
to make you wise. It doesn't mean that because you read it, you're saved already. No. You need to embrace it. You need to open your heart. But you know what? One thing we need to know, and it is that, that the scripture says that the, the word of God is like a sword that has two edges. It cuts from the two sides and penetrates to the bones, penetrates to the, to the inmost part of us. So the scriptures help. And that's why they, can, they are able, they, are, they, they can make you able. They can make you wise for salvation. They enable you, they develop, they help you to develop the faith that you need. Yes, yes. In many ways, you find it in the scriptures. You, you go to Psalm 119, you're going to find it in so many ways. I think it's at like 179 verses there. They're all supporting the same idea. And Paul said to the Colossians, as he was giving kind of a, a series of uh, um, uh, commandments and ordinances, uh, how to keep the church grow, going and growing. He said, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your heart. You see, this thing of church is, is not an invention of a uh, the easy church or the Pentecostals or the Baptists or no. Church is a mystery revealed by God after the death of Jesus. But it's very close to the assembly concept that they had before. In the moments that you see the people of God in the Old Testament, that, that they are more hooked to God is are on those moments in which they get the scriptures to and they put their hearts to it and they repent and turn of their wicked ways and then the glory of God comes on them. It's the same. It's the same. So, but today trying to complete the, 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 the profile for a disciple that is being developed. We go from encounters that help each one of us to practice loving our neighbors, to expose them not only to a good friendship, but to the kingdom of God and its things. And the church is the visual part of the kingdom of God on earth. We, with all our defects and all our limitations and all our uh, failures uh, and uh, situations and divisions and things, is the church the visible expression of the kingdom of God? And all of that, people need to see it and people need to, 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 to be part of it, and people need to have, to be exposed to it. So they, they, they turn their faith. And we know that your testimony influence in the heart of people so they can, they can have the faith also. We know that the creation also in, influence in the heart of people that we can say, my goodness, God is God. And, uh, but they need the message. They need to hear the message of Christ. The open-mindedness is not the call of God. We need to, to teach in the, the, the gospel with, a lot, with lots of love and wisdom. Yes, the, the Bible 
the reason why we have uh, uh, evangelism is because God loves the world. Is because God loves mankind. Yes, with open arms, with open hearts. But there's only one way. And the best way for faith is the scriptures, is the revelation of God. One day I went to the altar and I said, God, I don't understand. But if you want me here, here I am. But you know how I, 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 I felt something. Uh, my, my mind was not 100% clear what was going on. I had an idea, but not certainty. But as they introduced me to the scriptures and I started to, to see Jesus walking uh, the, the dusty uh, roads of Judea and how he spoke, what he spoke, how he treated people and all of that, the Holy Spirit was uh, working on my heart. And I turned my life to God. And I try to help, since then on, those who don't know the Lord. And you and me are called. And what I'm, we're trying to do with these this, uh, messages that I only have one more um, stage that I want to share with you, that is not going to be today, um, is to enable you is to clarify in your mind what with uh, this COVID-19 pandemic and politics and craziness of the world, we, we have come down to a standby position in which, in which we are not doing things that we're supposed to do. We are waiting until the opportunity comes. And I think, I, 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 I was talking to a couple pastors this, week, uh, this morning uh, Dan and Matt, mm -mm. Uh, Ben and Matt here, uh, and for whatever situation of the conversation, I told them, this is my conviction. We are living in days in which the panorama looks like war times. And what I mean with this is that you pass in this corner and there is a piece of a building that is being turned out, demolished, and the rubbles are on the floor. And there are people wounded, crying in one place, people dead in another place, and you walk in among those things. And uh, you, nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow, if the help is going to come or not. And, uh, and we know that there is a threat of the enemy that is coming and so on and so forth. And the thing is that I, I don't have a lot of expectation that that panorama is going to change until the coming of Christ. It might just stay like that all the time you're walking among bloody people dead bodies, uh, debris of demolished buildings by bombs and missiles and whatever. And the Lord wants you and me to be the salt of the earth, the light of the world, and to help the needy to come to the knowledge of him. So, in whatever moment is appropriate, we need to tell them the message of Christ. Amen? That is evangelism. That is the, the one beside uh, the next uh, screen there. Uh, is evangelism. is direct exposition to the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They need to hear that. They might feel comfortable with your love, with your care, but in, in whatever point is proper, we need to tell them 
we went astray, but God so loved us that Jesus came and we are to believe in him so we can go back to the kingdom of our Father and live with him forever and ever and ever. Let us bow our heads and pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your care. We praise the name of Jesus, our Lord. And um, we pray that you enable us. If we pray that you help us to get out of the standby position and uh, idleness that all these um, problems of the world have been causing in us. And I pray that you bless us. So we, we uh, extend your kingdom and let the thirsty to drink from the fountain of life and help the wounded to receive the healing uh, that only uh, the medicines of heaven can give and to uh, bring light to those in darkness. Bless us, O oh Lord. Lead us. We are yours. Here we say the words of Isaiah. Here we are. Send us, O oh Lord. Amen and amen.